Hey everybody, it's Chris from Rottweiler Performance, and today we had a unique opportunity uh, working on this race bike here that we're prepping for the Sonora Rally to show you guys how to install a recluse torque drive clutch. Okay, so this is not the auto clutch. Um, this is just a torque drive clutch. So it's uh, just a better clutch with more plates. Um, you know, if you want to kind of hedge your bets and you're racing and you want to make sure you've got the best insurance possible, uh, this is the clutch to put in. So uh, we had an opportunity today to, to kind of walk you through. These videos are usually pretty popular with people who are attempting to tackle the job. So uh, we're going to take you along with us and show you how it's done. So let's dive in. Okay, so before we dive in, we're going to show you the scope of the parts. So you basically get a really nice hard and nice billet clutch cover right here. So these are great uh, for scratch. They just don't scratch very easily at all. The, the, the surface is uh, extremely hard. So hard anodized is great, especially for steel toed boots uh, hitting the cover there. Um, they do give you some hardware and some replacement bits and pieces here. A new lock washer for the center hub nut. Um, you've got your inner hub, your outer hub, and then you've got some, uh, some uh, rubber uh, cush drive pieces that we're gonna pull out of the stock clutch and transfer into here. Uh, you have a really nice pressure plate. Everything's hard anodized, so it's, uh, it's really high quality stuff. You got your steel plates, and then here we have all of our fiber plates, and we're, we have them sitting in a cord of Maxima Pro Plus. So in this case, you can either lay the bike down on its side if you're not changing the oil, oil, or in our case, we're going to change the oil. So we just took a whole quart of Maxima Pro Plus and poured it in this bag, and we're letting the, uh, the fiber plates soak uh, before we dive in. So. We've already removed the, uh, the, the stock cover here. There's an O-ring we're gonna save and the hardware we're gonna save, the cover we're not. Um, and then the screw cap we are gonna save. Um, but we didn't need to show you how to remove that. That's pretty basic. There's a little spring right here that's attached to it for the brake uh, cable that you're gonna wanna take off. But now we're gonna dive into these parts and start disassembling uh, the clutch assembly, the stock clutch assembly. First, we're gonna remove these six five millimeter bolts right here. These are the pressure plate screws, uh, the pressure, pressure plate ring. This is a Belvo spring. There's a slider ring just behind this that you can't see, uh, and then the pressure plate. We're gonna grab the whole bunch all at once. Now you're gonna watch out for the push rod here, which has got a bearing on it. Um, but that's basically what you're looking at right there. So we have the Belleville spring, pressure plate. There's a little wear piece right here. You wanna keep that together. And that's it. Next, we're gonna remove the throw out bearing, which is basically right in front of the push rod. So you can leave the push rod in there. Um, and then we're gonna start prying back these tabs right here. So if you have a screwdriver that you really don't like, you can use that. But it's best to use uh, you know, some sort of uh, purposeful uh, chisel uh, like this to get underneath it. Now they do give you a spare um, lock washer, so you don't have to be that careful. Okay, so at this point, we're basically gonna use an electric impact to get this off. Um, that's about the best way we found. And the reason we left the drive pins in and the clutch in is because you can actually just push on this and get enough friction uh, for it to pop off. Just like that. Now we're gonna pull the drive pins out one at a time. There's six of them. And then we're going to use some sort of pick. So I like picks like this to try to get behind the clutch. So now we're gonna to try to pull the whole clutch pack out. So many of you, many of them, you can kind of get by hand. And just like that, we got the whole, the whole stack. We're gonna push this back in for now. Uh, and we're gonna pull that out in a minute. But that's basically the whole clutch pack right here. Okay, I stand corrected. We have one more that I didn't notice. We're just gonna pull that one off. That's every plate. 
Okay, next what you want to do is grab the inner hub and gently pull it out. What you want to watch out for is this washer right here, okay? So we don't want that coming out or falling on the ground. So you can take that off, put it right back in. The clutch housing is going to stay. And what Recluse wants you to do is actually hold this like this and move this back and forth to see if there's any play, uh, to see if your dampers are worn out. So basically use, there's rubber dampers inside here, right there. And use can cause play over time. Now, the only issue I have with that is that this clutch assembly is brand new. We've only broken it in on the dyno and there's just a slight amount of play. So I'm gonna feel good about putting this in the brand new Recluse clutch. Uh, you can be your own judge on that. They're not very expensive and they're always handy to have around. Um, but uh, this one has just a very, very slight amount of play. You can maybe see it, um, but it's brand new. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these in. Again, you can be your own best judge. All right, at this point we're gonna be moving the Kush drive pieces from the stock hub to the new billet recluse hub. So they're gonna go in the same orientation, which is there's a little joining bar that's in the back on the bottom. They're gonna to go towards the back side just the same. So they're gonna pop in just like that. Once they're all in, we're going to take the uh, recluse billet uh, drive part and pop that in. And you wanna make sure that the fingers fit down in between the pieces and it sits about that far down. Now we're ready to install it in the motorcycle. Okay, now we're gonna install the recluse, uh, or recluse, or recluse, or however you wanna call it, clutch assembly. Uh, you wanna make sure the thrust washer is still there. We covered that before. Um, and we're just going to slide this on, doesn't matter what spline it goes on. So we're going to put it on just like that. Now at this point in the instructions, Recluse is going to ask you to basically put on the, uh, the new uh, retaining washer and torque everything down. But the problem is you've got no way of holding this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to bypass that step. We're going to get all the clutch plates installed and we're going to hold them together so we can get our torque on it. Okay, so we're going to come back to that part. Okay, everybody, this is the slightly more advanced part. You're gonna need some sort of caliper to measure the thicknesses of the plates. So they're gonna give you your steel plates. You're gonna get 10 of them. Two of them are one millimeter thick and eight of them are 1.15 millimeter thick or 40 thousandths if we're, going, uh, if we're using standard or, and 48 thousandths. So if I set these down and I measure the thinner one, we're looking at just a hair under a millimeter, okay, or about 40 thousandths. If I measure one of the other eight, it's going to measure about 1.17 millimeters or around 46, 48 thousandths. In the manual, they call them out at 48 thousandths. So you're going to need some sort of caliper, and in the instructions, they tell you to, to load the entire clutch pack, um, but they also allude to the fact that you're going to have to put them all together and, and measure them as a whole, and you're going to have to refer to a chart in the back of the manual that basically is going to tell you what setting to set uh, the pressure plate on. There's three settings that are basically going to uh, pull the pressuring down further uh, or further away uh, from the Belleville spring to dictate what kind of preload you put on the clutch. So in the back of the manual, we'll just go ahead and show you, they're gonna give you a chart like this. And you're gonna stack all these up. These two outer plates are the thinner ones. All the fiber plates are the same. And then if you're over 1.1 inches, uh, you're gonna go with setting three. If you're 1.088 to 1.1, 1 .1, you're gonna go with setting two. And if you're 1.066 to 1.088, you're gonna go with setting one. So we're gonna put them all together right now and we're gonna figure out what setting is best for the clutch pack we got. Before we begin, we're gonna add one addendum to this video, is your clutch pack basically rotates backwards, uh, counterclockwise, I should say. Recluse is gonna want your uh, steel plates in this orientation right here, okay? 
So make sure they're in this orientation, not this orientation. The instructions are very clear on this, but we're gonna show you in the video. They're gonna want them in that orientation and you wanna make sure to put these over the drive pins like that and not like that in that area. That would be bad. Okay, at this point we have our caliper set on standard, which is what uh, Recluse uh, calls out in their manual. And measuring this, we're coming out at right on the money, 1.1. So we can either run uh, on setting two or three. Um, and basically what Recluse tells you is that uh, um, on the pressure ring, what this means is there's settings one, two, and three. You'll see these numbers on there. And it is basically calling out different steps, which is going to put more or less pressure on the Belleville spring. So if you read the back of the manual in the Recluse, it's going to basically tell you uh, exactly what that means to you and how you want your clutch to feel. Uh, so basically, depending on the number you set it at, is depending on how much preload that's going to put on the Belleville spring, which is the very large disc we first took off. Uh, and so, but right now we're looking at uh, setting three, uh, being that we are 1.1 uh, inches thick on the stack. Okay, now we're going to start loading uh, our plates. Uh, we've got the, the original stack. The whole thing is going to go in this way, so we're going to set it on the table and we're going to pull pieces out like this and put them in one at a time like this. And remember, Recluse wants you to put these uh, steel plates in in this orientation because this does spin counterclockwise. Uh, and we're going to want to put the drive pins in right now and load the one millimeter thick first and then the, one, the other one millimeter thick plate last. So now we're going to put the drive pins in like so. And we can put one steel plate on or you can, you can use the, the friction of the oil uh, to maybe put about three of these things in. And they should hold. We're going to try to put it on the bottom and see if they'll hold. I think there's some recesses, so we're good there. Bottom one holds. So now that we have the drive pins in, we're going to start with the steel plates. Remember, you don't want to put them on like that. You want to line up those parts right there. And then we're going to do a, a uh, fiber plate. Now, you also, you don't want to put it in here. They won't let you put it all the way in anyway. Um, but you want to make sure you have it in the correct uh, orientation in relation to the clutch housing here. Again, making sure that our steel plates are in the correct orientation. Fiber plates don't matter. They only matter where you put the tangs right here. If you do it wrong, they won't allow you to put them to the back. So this is the point where things can start going wrong, where you actually can load the fiber plates in the wrong position and they'll feel like normal. Uh, but you really, really want to be careful and you want to keep setting those in the same orientation in the, in the right spot. Um, the wrong spot will be tapered and rounded at the bottom. So just make sure you're paying attention throughout all of this. And our last one should be the one millimeter thickness again. Okay, now that we have everything together, we're going to put the Recluse provided uh, locking washer on here. Now you'll see these two little grooves right here and right here. So you're going to want to make sure that this tab right here, this folded tab, actually sits down in one of those grooves. And then we're going to start turning on the nut. Now, the reason I do this now instead of before, like they have in their instructions, is because I want to be able to use the clutch, clutch plates right here as friction. If you can create a lot of friction just by pushing on them with your hand and getting on this with a torque wrench. So we're going to start, start right now and try to torque this thing down. They want 50 foot-pounds or 68 newton meters. So we've got our torque wrench set to 68 newton meters. If I switch this over, it's going to be about 50 foot-pounds. So we're going to go with 68 newton meters. This is a metric bike. And we're going to use our fingers just to kind of hold everything together. And if we're lucky, we can put enough friction on this to actually gain uh, the torque that we need to torque this nut. Now, in a situation where you can't get enough pressure on this thing, you're going to want the bike in gear and the taller gear, chain on, you know, down on its side, get some pressure on here and get torque. Now, uh, we were able to get about 
uh, 38 newton meters of torque out of it, which is not quite 68. Now, it's not incredibly important. You get this right on the money. Um, we just really want to turn this flat right here to line up with this tab right here. So in this case, um, we believe that it's okay to use an impact gun to just line this up. Um, we know it's either, you know, right here, this flat is almost lining up with this tab right here, which is good, but we only have uh, 38 newton meters of torque on it. So we know that if we rotate this flat around to this tab right here, we're probably going to be in the ballpark. Obviously, if this tab were to get all the way around, that'd be way too much torque. So we're going to use an impact, an electric impact, and just rotate this flat around to meet this one, and then we're, we're pretty much good. We understand that somebody doing this in their garage, they may not have all these particular tools or special tools to hold the clutch. So we've been doing this for years. It's fine. Um, just kind of tap on a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, so now we've got this tab to line up. I'm satisfied with that. Okay, at this point to set the locking tab, we're gonna use a pair of channel locks. So I'm gonna rotate this to where the tab I wanna bend is vertical. Get underneath the nut, try to grab the top. Just work that down just like that. Do yourself a favor, try not to get in here and hit anything with a hammer and pick or, or anything like that because you can miss and, and possibly break one of these towers here and you, you really don't want to do that. That's going to be a bad day. So just get in here with your channel locks, be patient. We can grab this one right here. It's not as necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. Now we've compressed both locking tabs. If we want, we can get around and kind of bring this one down a little bit more. Try not to damage, not trying, definitely not damaging any of the parts. So now we've brought both tabs around this nut. We're satisfied with that. Now we can start working on the pressure plate. Okay, now we're gonna put the pressure plate assembly together. So we're gonna start with the thrust washer right here. So this fits on the end of the push rod. So that should just fit in all the way right here. Um, now we're going to bring up the stock pressure plate. So the stock pressure plate should have this Belleville spring here. I'm gonna set that aside. And there is a slider ring right here, this little metal thing. Now, if you're just pulling it off this, if you never moved it, you can take it off this. And once the recluse pressure plate has been put on, it will locate itself. It can only fit in one spot. The slider ring will fit directly on there. Now, if you've lost the orientation, camera's not gonna pick it up, but if you look real closely on, on one side, it'll say top, which faces out. So we know this is, uh, We've taken this off the stock pressure plate exactly uh, as it's intended. So we're going to put that on here. Then we're going to put the pressure ring here on the Belleville spring. And if you uh, refer to the back further in this video, we talked about what setting to put it on. So we've already measured the clutch pack uh, uh, previously in the video, and we know that we're going to use number three. Now, depending on what you measure, you're going to use either one, two, or three. In this case, we're going to use three. So we're going to line these parts up right here. And then Recluse is going to give you their own screws. And the reason for this is, is head height. And so they don't want to use the stock screws because they tend to be a little bit tall. And because they have more uh, um, uh, parts pushing out a little bit, that they want to run some lower head bolts. So we're going to use their bolts right here. Okay, now that we have all the Recluse uh, special bolts started, we're going to use a T25 Torx. We're going to start driving those in. Now, there is a little bit of a lip on this pressure plate that will catch the spring, so you can see the spring can drop down. Um, so we're going to want to make sure that the spring is sitting on that lip when things get tightened and not crooked. So we're going to pull it out like this, and we're going to start driving in the screws. At this point, we're just going to concentrate on two opposing screws so we can get everything's set and then we're going to chase the rest in and we're going to torque the screws at 55 inch pounds, 4.5 foot pounds or 6 newton meters. Now we've got our torque wrench set at either 4.5 uh, foot pounds, about 55 inch pounds 
or six newton meters. Since this is a metric bike, we're going to go with six newton meters and make sure each one of these is torqued going in a cross hatch pattern. So go from one straight across to the other to the furthest one away. And one more. At this point, we're pretty much finished up with the internals. What I like to do at this point is actually get up on the clutch handle and pull it out and make sure that I've got good action here and nothing is binding before I put the clutch cover on. Everything feels good to me. All right, everybody, we're on the home stretch. At this point, we're going to put the stock O-ring back on the inner case. So a little bit of grease or assembly lube or oil is just fine. In this case, you know, you can see there's just enough oil on it to hold it um, pretty handily. Uh, then we're going to locate the beautiful recluse cover. This, again, this is hard anodized, so it's really resistant to scratches, and, and these have held up really well over time. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is actually get this thing hooked on the spring on the brake pedal down here uh, before you put it on. So we're just going to kind of work that on real quick and then bring everything up into place. Okay, being careful not to knock the O-ring off, we're gonna locate the OEM bolts and start putting them back in. Um, there's a couple long ones um, that are different lengths, so you wanna make sure there's two long ones that are actually the same length and then three shorter ones, and it's pretty self-explanatory where those go. At this point in the video, we want to take a minute to show you in their manual for 250 to 300 two-stroke 17 plus models. They do want you to use one of their special bolts here. They've indicated it right here, recluse bolt. Uh, on this, this is an FE501, so we didn't have that. But we just wanted to mention it for the video, just in case you're doing one for one of those bikes. And then the two longer bolts basically on the FE501 go here and here. The shorter ones go here, here, and here. And we're going to want to torque those to 10 newton meters, or about 7 foot-pounds. Okay, home stretch here, folks. At this point, if you've drained the oil, you're going to refill the oil uh, to the indication in the window, and you're going to put the cap on, and happy days, you are done. Well, guys, I hope it wasn't as hard as you thought. I hope this video helped. Uh, some people want to see these videos before they buy to see what they're getting into. Some people want to use the videos to actually install them after they bought the product. But um, Recluse Clutches are a great insurance uh, uh, for your ride if you just want to know that you've got the best clutch in there. I mean, obviously, you see the components are of high quality. They're all billet, hard anodized, uh, very durable pieces. You get this beautiful clutch cover right here, which is hard anodized, which resists scratches and is uh, a lot more durable than stock. Um, cast tends so you can break holes in cast. This is billet, so at worst you're going to dent that in a, in a bad tip over in the rocks. Um, but the torque drive clutches are basically, why are they better? They've got better components. They've got better um, uh, friction materials on their, on their uh, clutch plates. Um, the metal plates are, are, have a certain shape to them where they cool better, uh, and they also scavenge oil a little bit better. And as far as the fiber plates go, uh, the quality is such that they're actually able to get them a little thinner, which allows them to get an extra set of plates in there. So you have about 10 to 15 percent more uh, surface area on this clutch than you do stock. So basically all the way around, it's just a better componentry uh, for your, your motor. So again, I hope this video helped. Definitely go through the manual when you get it and check out all the uh, details that Recluse has got uh, for you. We probably uh, didn't cover every single one of them. Um, but it's a good idea to check over that. But we wanted to make this video to kind of show you uh, basically how easy this install is. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Subscribe, share, do all that stuff I'm supposed to tell you to do, but it definitely helps us. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. See ya.